Hi everyone and welcome back to the George Collection. I'm Rachel Wrightside Blonde. Today marks episode 50 and for the 50th episode I thought I would bring you a fun story about the cover with Robert De Niro on it, the second issue from December and January of 96. To do that I'm going to share an excerpt out of the book written by Matt Berman who is the original creative director and the book is called JFK Jr. George and Me. If you haven't yet had the pleasure of reading this book, I highly recommend it. It's a fun inside look at the relationship between JFK Jr. and Matt Berman and also the inner workings of the original George. Here's what Matt Berman says about the De Niro cover. The De Niro cover would be the first George shoot I would handle completely on my own. The Cindy Crawford cover was great, but Herb shot it in the same style he would have employed for Vanity Fair. Gray background, classic studio lighting, and a rented Revolutionary War jacket. Once again, I thought of the star British photographer Nick Knight, whose images I had used for the prototype. If he had shot the cover, it would be truly different. I called Nick and explained who I was and what the magazine was. Once I told him the subject was Robert De Niro, he was in. We agreed to promote Casino on the cover, but the image of De Niro needed to be a George cover foremost. The fact that I could even think that way had shown the progress we had quickly made in establishing our own look. I hired an amazing stylist named Paul Sinclair who had an impeccably tailored navy George Washington coat made in London, which he paired with a monochromatic combination of a hot pink Gucci shirt and silk tie in a 70s style. This would be De Niro's wardrobe. John invited me over to his house the night before the shoot. When I got there, he handed me a rolling rock, and I waited while he went into another room. He came out and handed me a long, dark leather box. Here it is. Inside the box was a beautiful, heavy, polished sword. It looks like a real George Washington sword, I said, turning it to catch the light. John laughed. That's exactly whose it was. His father had been given the sword during his presidency. John couldn't remember the occasion or who had given it to JFK, but it was the real thing. I carefully slid gently back into its velvet-lined box and snapped it shut. What if I leave it in the cab? John shook his head and rolled his eyes. You won't. The next day, De Niro strutted around the studio in full regalia, hamming it up, sword in hand. You know, you really look like George Washington, I said. De Niro walked past me regally and said, I am George Washington. Between De Niro's professionalism, Nick Knight's skill behind the camera, and Paul Sinclair's discerning eye for style, our second shoot went off without a hitch. Though it had a completely different feel from the first cover, the shot of De Niro spearing an ace of spades with Washington's sword for the second issue of George turned out to be an equally arresting image on the newsstand. That's just one of the fun, entertaining stories from this book. Again, I highly recommend it. Matt Berman's JFK Jr., George, and Me. Inside the magazine, it gives credit to who the sword belonged to, and it says, The sword, courtesy of Carolyn Kennedy, is one of five exact replicas of the one George Washington carried, right down to the worn spot on the ivory grip. The original sword is in the permanent collection of the Smithsonian. So there you have it. Now every time you see this cover of George, you know that that sword is an exact replica, only one of five, of George Washington's actual sword. Kind of cool. I hope you found this episode of the George Collection interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time. George, which is a hoot of a magazine. I thought you were a lawyer. I was. What happened? Well, we uh, we decided. I mean, actually taking a cue from from folks like yourself and you around the 1992 election, that that there was an opportunity here to uh, change the definition of a political magazine. Uh, certainly, the way Americans were uh, accessing information about politics and politicians was changing. Uh, candidates were appearing on late night talk shows, on talk radio, on sitcoms. Uh, and there was a, a kind of a leveling process and while the rest of media clearly had caught up with that we felt that political magazines per se hadn't your mother was a hell of an editor at doubleday that's what i hear would she have liked george i think she would have